A Baker is in the house at linebacker for the Seahawks. I'll be breaking down the latest free agent addition to Mike McDonald's defense and where the Seahawks stand at linebacker. Coming up next on a bonus edition of Locked On Seahawks. You are Locked On Seahawks. Your daily Seattle Seahawks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Greetings, 12. This is Corbin Smith, host of the Locked On Seahawks podcast, your daily Seahawks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. A special thanks to all the 12s tuning in here for this bonus Saturday episode, whether you're listening in nearby Bellevue or if you're in Bellevue, Nebraska. We greatly appreciate each and every one of you for making Locked On Seahawks your first listen five days a week. In this case, six days a week. Another busy free agency day. The Seahawks landing another linebacker. I'll be diving into what Jerome Baker brings to the team. And I'll also be taking a look at the depth chart and how the structure of the current linebacker group seems to be meshing well with the rest of the roster from a short-term and long-term standpoint, a wait-and-see approach, a very exciting episode coming your way, courtesy of FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. With any winning $5 bet, that's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Now for your lead story here on our bonus edition of Locked On Seahawks. Jerome Baker, formerly of the Miami Dolphins, Visited with the Seahawks yesterday, and when a deal doesn't happen in free agency after a visit the day of, more times than not, the player is moving on to their next visit with another team. Your goal is to make it they don't leave without signing. That was actually an exception here. The Seahawks signing Baker today to a one-year, $7 million contract. The 27-year-old will now take his talents to the Pacific Northwest, and he's going to join Tyrell Dodson in a completely restructured linebacker group. Baker brings a nice resume to the table here. 587 career combined tackles, 22 and a half sacks. So he's been a pretty good blitzing linebacker throughout his career. He had a season with more than 30 pressures in 2021, and he's got five interceptions. Last year, he was one of the highest graded coverage linebackers. According to Pro Football Focus, he was 18th out of more than 70 qualified linebackers in that category. So you're talking about a player that is smaller for a middle linebacker, but he plays bigger than 225 pounds. He's kind of a tall, lanky linebacker, really athletic, can play sideline to sideline, has a history of being solid in pass coverage, has given up less than eight yards per reception each of the last two years, less than 8.4 yards per reception in the last three seasons, and he's had solid coverage grades from PFF in all three of those seasons. He had two interceptions last year. He returned one for a touchdown against Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles. And again, as I mentioned a moment ago, this guy's been a really good pass rusher, 22 and a half sacks in his career in six seasons. He's never been a pro bowler. He's never been an all pro selection, but he's been rock solid. So you are bringing in a player. This is much different than Tyrell Dodson, who had only started five games his entire NFL career before Matt Milano got hurt last year and he started the final 10 games for the Bills, played pretty well in those 10 starts, got to start in the postseason as well. But he still has a small sample size as a starter. Joe Baker has been starting for most of his NFL career, and the numbers back that up. Almost 600 combined tackles, more than 20 career sacks. He has been productive, not an overly flashy player by any means, but He's going to put up stats for you, and he's still relatively young. Again, he just turned 27 recently, so he's going to be 27 for the entire season. This is still a guy that's got a lot of football ahead of him in the prime of his career, and the Seahawks are giving him a one-year contract. He's kind of taking that flyer on somebody that just got cut by the Dolphins before the start of free agency. They were trying to open up some cap space. They ended up using that to get Jordan Brooks, ironically. This is one of those rare free agency trades where – two teams end up signing players from the other team at the same position, and it ends up working out like a trade. But the Seahawks are paying a little bit less money on a short-term deal to bring in Jerome Baker, and the same can be said for Tyrell Dodson, who's going to be coming in on a one-year contract as well. When you look at how these two players compare and how they should be able to complement one another, you look at the stats last year, 
Both of these guys were top 20 linebackers in terms of coverage. Now, I have not had a chance to watch as much film as I would like to on both these guys just yet, but the couple games that I've looked at with both players, I actually think Jerome Baker is a little bit better in coverage than Tyrell Dotson. And again, this is a small sample size. I've got more games to watch. My opinion may change on that, but Baker has been really good in coverage the last three years. Has given up a couple touchdowns, but he's been pretty darn good limiting yards after the catch. He's had pass breakups. He had two interceptions last year, but both these guys were highly ranked last year in coverage. Baker has been a top 25 linebacker two of the past three years in coverage. So this is a guy that has had consistency. Dodson, we don't know what to expect because until last year, he had only started those five games. So he had limited snaps on defense, but he was really impless, impressive in the run game. This is where I differ with some people. Dodson is a guy that when I've watched the run game, he'll get downhill, he'll smack people, and he's a little bit bigger. So that ninth ranked grade at 86.1 defending the run, you can see it on film. This is a guy that really plays the run well. He can run sideline to sideline. Jerome Baker's been hit and miss as a run defender. And I think that's where his size comes into play. Again, just 6'2", 225 pounds. Maybe he's a little heavier than that, but that's what he's listed at by the Dolphins. PFF lists in there. He has always been a tall, leaner linebacker that plays bigger than that. But at the same time, he can get absorbed by blocks. There are sometimes issues where his size comes into play defending the run. He has been a solid run defender, just not as good as in coverage, at least from a consistency standpoint. I think his pass rushing attributes might be the best thing that he brings to Mike McDonald's defense. And both these guys were really effective as pass rushers last year. Dodson with a 26-plus percent pressure rate on his 41 pass rushing opportunities. Mike McDonald loved to blitz Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen last year. Didn't blitz them a ton in terms of percentage, but when he did, they were very effective getting after quarterbacks and wreaking havoc. So I anticipate both these guys, younger athletic linebackers, that have track records of being able to blitz, get after the quarterback. They have the athleticism to run sideline to sideline. They've been rock solid in coverage. These guys fit the bill of what Mike McDonald has had as a defensive coordinator in Baltimore. It's the type of players he had in his one season coaching at Michigan at the college level. So I'm not surprised that these are the two guys that they ended up signing without breaking the bank. And obviously with one-year deals, this is going to be a situation where both these guys, they're playing for their respective futures in Seattle. The Seahawks want to see what they have in these guys. But just looking at the signings without worrying about the future, you are looking at two guys that are both really athletic. I think that Dodson is more of a thumper in terms of the run game than what you're going to see from Baker. And I would anticipate that Baker is probably going to be the player that you're going to see playing the Will linebacker spot and Dodson's going to be playing the mic. That's what I am anticipating here with these two players. They should be on the field together quite a bit. And with their athleticism, their coverage skills, I would expect the Seahawks are in nickel, which they're going to be a lot because of the secondary talent they have. And it allows you to move Devin Witherspoon around. Maybe you utilize Julian Love in that capacity. They've got a lot of flexibility there in those nickel and dime sets. But when they're in nickel, they aren't going to miss a beat in coverage with those two players, Dodson and Baker, out there because they are really athletic. They're fluid movers in coverage. And so I'm really intrigued to see these guys play together. I think they have a lot of similarities, and yet there are some clear differences that I think are going to allow these guys to complement each other. There's going to be some flexibility in Seattle's defense. There's going to be some growing pains, though, too. These guys have not played together. Dodson, again, 15 career starts. He's still a relatively inexperienced player. So – that's one of the reasons you give him a one-year contract. You want to see what he can do with a full season. Nonetheless, these two guys fit what the Seahawks are looking for. When Baker came out to Seattle after visiting the Titans, I thought this was a situation where the Seahawks were going to try to get this done and get him signed before he could travel to visit with somebody else because he does have a lot of the characteristics and he has the experience Dodson does not bring to the table as a starter for most of his six NFL seasons. Coming up next, I'm going to continue breaking down these two free agent additions and how the linebacker spot really mirrors what Mike McDonald and John Schneider are doing with the rest of the roster right now heading into the 2024 season. You're listening to a bonus edition of Locked On Seahawks. 
This episode is brought your way by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game in the tourney with March Madness officially underway. Whether you're betting on a big upset like Fairleigh Dickinson when they beat Purdue as a 16 seed last year or one of the elite one seeds, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. If your first $5 bet wins, that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, you can even pick who's going to win it all. Whether you think it's going to be a blue blood like Duke or Kansas or a Cinderella such as Drake, all options are on the table at your fingertips. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. You're listening to a special edition Saturday episode of Locked on Seahawks. This is your host, Corbin Smith. A special thanks to all the 12s out there. Thank you for making Locked on Seahawks your first lesson five days a week. In this case, six days a week. We greatly appreciate it. Make sure to check out, as you know, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel, Locked On Sports Today. Baseball baseball fans, mark your calendars for March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern, the best MLB season preview coming exclusively to Locked On Sports Today. Be the first to get local insight from the MLB local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network. Again, find it on March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. The Seahawks added another linebacker in free agency today. Former Dolphins starter, a six-year starter at that, Jerome Baker, signing a one-year deal worth up to $7 million with the Seahawks. He joins Tyrell Dodson as the two new linebackers. This is going to be the first time that we have seen this team. I mean, a couple of years ago, they didn't have K.J. Wright and Bobby Wagner, but this is a completely retooled linebacking group that moving forward, I'd anticipate we aren't going to see Bobby Wagner back in a Seahawks uniform again, but you never know. We didn't think he was going to be back when he played for the Rams a few years back, so – this is a completely retooled linebacker group. And what it looks like when you see the contracts that are being handed out by John Schneider across the board, there's been a few two-year contracts like Rayshon Jenkins from the Jaguars, former Jaguars safety. They got a two-year deal. Noah Fant got a two-year deal. Leonard Williams got a three-year. A few of the guys that they re-signed. But most of the contracts that John Schneider is handing out right now are of the one-year variety. And that includes both of these new linebackers in Dodson and Baker. And this does not surprise me. John Schneider in the past has done a lot of one-year deals, and there's some negatives to that. It inflates your cap number. If you have multi-year deals, you can lower the cap number a little bit, at least for the first year. You can front load it. It gives you a little bit more flexibility to be able to add a little more talent to your roster. At the same time, though, it also can put you in spots where you get dead cap hits, which you don't get those if you have players that are on a one-year deal, you don't have to worry about those multi-year dead cap hits that you have to deal with. So there are some benefits to doing one-year deals. And if a player doesn't work out, they're not under contract, you just move on. At the same time, if somebody like Dobson, who only has started 15 games in his career, comes in and absolutely lights it up, now you're going to be on the hook for a lot of money. And that player may be looking to hit free agency. You might be one and done in a player that you want to keep around. So there's some risk to it as well. But I'm not surprised that that's what the Seahawks are doing, particularly at linebacker, because I think Mike McDonald, being a first-time head coach, he wants to have the opportunity to be able to evaluate the players that he is bringing in on this roster. And that includes some of the guys learning. He wants what he has out there this is going to be a year of evaluation and I'm not saying the Seahawks are going to tank this year they wouldn't be extending a player like Leonard Williams if they weren't envisioning themselves being able to compete this next year at the same time though they're not going all in if they were going all in you might see some more big splashes you might have seen a little bit more movement trying to get cap space opened up for this year but they're trying to clean the books with players like Jamal Adams having dead cap hits that are strictly this year so that next season they have a little bit more flexibility. And maybe some of these players, they are signing to one-year deals like Dodson and Baker could be a big part of the team's future. But Mike McDonald wants to be able to evaluate these players. The coaching staff wants to be able to evaluate these players. So it seems like to me, and it's pretty obvious with the moves they've made for the most part, that this is a wait-and-see approach. Even the trade for Sam Howell, you have two years to evaluate him. It gives you a little bit time to see, could he potentially be a long-term starting quarterback for us? 
or is he a long-term backup for us? You get an opportunity to see what he brings to the table and whether or not you need to draft a quarterback as early as next month. They still could do that. Sam Howell trade isn't going to prevent them from doing that. The right quarterback falls to them, but it gives them a little more flexibility. Nonetheless, there is a wait and see approach. And we're seeing this at linebacker. When you look at the depth chart for the Seahawks right now, even with the moves they've made, Jerome Baker, Tyrell Dodson, and John Radigan, who they tendered with a right of first refusal tender, all three of those guys are going to be unrestricted free agents next year in 2025. So all three guys at the top of your depth chart, they really are on one-year auditions. If Radigan gets an opportunity to try to complete for compete for playing time on defense, he's going to be in the same boat, but he's going to get a lot of special teams reps. All three of those guys are free agents. Patrick O'Connell is an exclusive rights free agent next year. Seattle typically tenders those players because it's really cheap. Why would you not let go or why would you not re-sign a young player like that? But O'Connell and Drake Thomas will be restricted free agents in 2026. Those guys have a chance to be around for the next several seasons if the Seahawks feel like they're making the right growth and development with those players, could potentially play for them on defense, but still – This is really a prove-it season for so many of these players that the Seahawks are bringing in on one of your deals, particularly the linebacker spot. Dodson and Baker, they are going to have microscopes on them. Are you guys going to be able to play at a high level for us? You're expecting Jerome Baker to play well. He's been a pretty solid starter for a number of years. Dodson, on the other hand, hey, we saw what you could do last year. That was still just 10 starts, though. Can you do it for an entire season? Can you take another step forward? Can you prove that you're a guy that we want to pay money to be a long-term starter? They are rolling the dice from that perspective, but they would rather do that than invest a multi-year deal in a player that they weren't necessarily sure was going to be a fit. And maybe that's what was going on with Jordan Brooks. Maybe Brooks just wanted to get out of town. But there's different variables there. Nonetheless, When you look at that depth chart, you can see that this is clearly a short-term approach right now. And a few of these players could be long-term solutions, but Mike McDonald wants the opportunity to evaluate these players. If that means they have a little less cap space to work with this year, so be it. He wants a chance to adequately be able to look at these players and see where they fit into the team's long-term plans. I think 2025 is when you're going to see a little more aggressive approach and be able to get some guys locked up long-term. And some of these players could be part of that plan, but they need to earn that contract. So this really is a feeling it out period in 2024. They still want to be competitive. They're not tanking, but they're bringing in players that they see as good fits, but seeing if they can be the player they are looking for as starters in this scheme. There's just a lot of unknowns when you bring in a new head coach that has a different scheme than what we've had before. You're trying to mesh the new pieces with the returning pieces, which Seattle's got plenty of those on defense. They're trying to blend together the new scheme with returning players, new free agents, and they're trying to figure out who do we want to be around for multiple seasons? Who do we want to be a part of the foundation? on this defense, on this football team. You're seeing that with the way that they're handling their contracts on offense too. Farrell Brown, Nick Harris getting one-year deals, cheap money. If we end up hitting on one of those guys, great. Maybe we can bring them back, but they aren't investing multi-year contracts in players. George Fant got the two-year deal because the Seahawks know what George Fant can do. And he's been around in the league a long time. And it's a contract they should have some outs if they want to move on next year too. So they set that up accordingly. They're just not making those multi-year investments where they don't have an out because they really want to see which players are going to mesh with what Mike McDonald and his coaching staff, Ryan Grubb as the coordinator, Adam Durde, the defensive coordinator, all these new coaches, they want players they can evaluate. Are these guys going to be long-term fixtures on our defense? And I think as much as any position, these linebackers, Mike McDonald, that's the position he cut his teeth coaching. He's had a great track record in college in the NFL coaching that position. He wants to get his hands on these guys with Kirk Olivadotti, Josh Bynes, first-time coach in the NFL, former linebacker that played for McDonald. All these guys want a chance to get their hands on these guys and see what they're going to do in this system before they are willing to commit a long-term deal. And if it doesn't work out, then look, hey, we can draft somebody. I still think they're going to draft a linebacker. They can compete against these two. These contracts do not put them in a position where they're trying to force these veterans on the field because we gave you a bunch of money for multiple seasons. They are going to bring in rookies to compete maybe as early as 
that third round selection that they have for a trade down in the second. We'll just see what they end up doing. This gives them a lot of flexibility and they're not going to have their hands tied. I don't always agree with this approach, but I think when you're looking at this current situation, first time since 2010 that you've got a new head coach, you have a completely overhauled coaching staff. There's going to be some dramatic changes in personnel and you want to see which players are going to really be a long-term part of your team. And you don't know that until you see them on the field on Sundays. And the practice field is going to contribute to that as well. But you got to see where these players fit when it really matters, when games are on the line. And that's why you're seeing a lot of these one-year contracts, particularly at the linebacker spot. This is going to be a great opportunity for both these players, Dodson and Baker. And you can make an argument for Radigan too. They bring in a rookie this is going to be a true always compete position group, maintaining Pete Carroll's mantra with a new coaching staff. They're going to be looking to compete, and this is going to be one of the positions that I'm really intrigued to watch. Both these veterans have a lot of athletic ability, and particularly with Baker, he has been a solid starter in the NFL, has started a number of seasons. You've seen flashes from Dodson, but neither one of them got a multi-year deal they got to prove that they can earn that contract to be the right fit here. If not, they're going to have a rookie they're going to try out. Maybe next year they bring in another veteran. They're going to move the pieces till they get the right fit and try to really build that foundation moving forward. As always, you can follow me on X and Threads at Corbin Smith NFL. Make sure to subscribe and follow Locked on Seahawks on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts to make sure you don't miss a single episode. Coming up on Monday, we will be bringing back Mock Draft Monday with some post-free agency flair. The Seahawks making a number of moves. How does that impact the way that mock drafts are being handled by the experts out there? We'll be diving into several of those expert mock drafts coming up on Monday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and thanks for listening. Go Hawks!